In today's chess video, I am going to show you this amazing chess opening trick called the Stafford Gambit. I will be covering all the traps in the knight c3 variation which many of you had requested in my previous video. So stay tuned till the end and keep watching Chess Talk. Hello chess friends, I am Jitendra Advani. If this is your first time on this channel and you want to learn some cool chess tricks and become a better chess player, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Okay, so we begin with e4, e5, knight f3 and knight f6. This is the Petrov's defense. Knight takes pawn and then we play knight to c6, offering to exchange knights. Knight takes knight and then pawn takes this knight. So from here, I had shown you two common moves that white could play to save this pawn. He could either go with pawn to d3 or he could play pawn to e5. I have covered all the tricks and traps for these two variations in my previous video. So do check that out by clicking on the i button above. Now let me show you some tricks in the third variation and that is knight to c3. Developing the knight and at the same time defending this pawn. So what do you do now? Well, you start with bishop c5 attacking this weak kingside pawn. From here, you will generally see three responses from white. The most common one being bishop to c4. He is developing his bishop and attacking your kingside pawn. And plus, he has also prepared himself for castling on the next move. Although this move might seem logical, but this is actually a blunder from white. Let me show you what happens next. From here, you will start attacking and play knight to g4. White simply castles and protects his f2 pawn. But now comes the most deadly move and that is queen to h4. Now you are threatening to attack both h2 and f2 pawns. Queen to h2 will be checkmate so he will have to play this forced move pawn to h3. We will continue our attack and capture the f2 pawn with our knight. If rook captures knight then we can simply recapture with our queen and we are at a solid advantage. If rook does not capture knight, then white will have to move his queen because it is being attacked by a knight. So let's say white plays queen to f3. He is anticipating your attack and trying to bring his queen into the game. But after knight to h3 double check, white will have to move his king either to h1 or h2. And after knight f2 discover check from the queen, if white blocks like this, then his queen is gone. And if he moves his king like this, then queen to h1 is a beautiful checkmate. Now let's go back and see the other two variations. So we now know that bishop to c4 is a bad move. A better move in this position would be bishop to e2. White has prepared his king for castling and at the same time he is also preventing this black knight from jumping to this dangerous g4 square. To counter this we need to play queen to d4 attacking the f2 pawn. White is left with no option but to castle on the king's side. And now we can safely regain our lost pawn by playing knight captures e4. If you look at the board carefully, although the material is even, but black still has more active pieces. He can quickly castle, develop his bishop and attack with all his pieces on the king's side. So all in all, black is in a slightly better position here. Now let's go back and see what is actually the best move for white in this position. Can you find it? It is pawn to h3. This move stops black from playing any nasty tricks. You can't play knight to g4 and if you try something like queen to d4 then white can easily counter it by playing queen to f3. Nevertheless, this trick is definitely worth trying out in your games. Do let me know in the comments if you have any questions or video suggestions. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe for more such chess videos. For some interesting chess tips, tricks and puzzles you can like my Facebook page. Links are in the description box below. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in my next video.